I am wife number five and my husband no longer finds me attractive. This is the question that we are exploring today. This Monday, we're going to be talking about and answering this question from this lovely lady. And I will see you right after this. Hello, my name is Chengi. I am your dating and relationship expert and founder of the Black Swan Relationship Academy right here where we teach you ladies how to present as a high value, high status, high worth woman that high quality men find completely, what can I say, irresistible. And today's question is coming from a young lady who shall remain nameless. What shall we call her? Wendy. Now, I'm not going to read her question because it's very, very long, but I am going to give you a summary of her scenario and then we're going to talk talk about it pertaining to the black swan way that a woman in this polygamous situation can actually get the favor of her husband back and looking at some of the dynamics obviously that happen now i can't go into the nuances and the depths of this question but we will look at some things but before we do let's go right into the advert for the black swan nation there are two types of women one that positions herself to be a winner using a man's very own nature. We call that woman a black swan or a woman who is convinced that she can scream, shout and complain and change a man's nature. Now, if you are a black swan, I have decided to help you out. Ladies, I am offering you a free, yes, another free masterclass on the secrets of a man's mind. In this course, we're going to look at the things that men will never tell you, are afraid to tell you, don't even know they need to tell you. Assume you should know. We're gonna look at the man's brain, how he is wired, his heart, his spirit. How does he really think? What is going on in his mind when he meets you, marries you, dates you, courts you? We're gonna look through every aspect and you will be able to understand the secrets of a man's mind. And being a black swan, you will be able to use those secrets to create the love life you crave and deserve. If that sounds good to you, all you have to do is follow any of the link or wherever you see this video and I will see you on the other side. Okay, now that we have that out of the way and you are all signed up for Black Swan Nation because that's where it's at. <laughs> I wanted to do this particular video because I want to show you ladies that the Black Swan Relationship Academy is really, uh, you know, it, 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 it covers relationships no matter what your situation is. I have been working with women in Arab countries and Asian countries in different relationship dynamics. And I know that some of you might be watching this for curiosity because you're probably not familiar with polygamous relationships and, um, and polygamy. Uh, so it might be a bit curious for you, like, what is this? And for some of us, uh, we we are in situations where we are in rotation okay and we are aware that we are in a rotation or you know we all in some way shape or form uh, do date and, and relate in a world where we are not you know the days when men would stand outside your gate and call your name until you came out and threw a stone on your window because he traveled halfway across the neighborhood to you those days are over we have internet dating we have online dating and we do have to deal with the uncomfortable dynamic that in Indeed, he might be speaking to other women and sometimes you feel the presence that maybe he might be into another woman more than you and maybe he was with you. It doesn't really matter. It really is simply to do with the dynamic. Now, obviously, polygamous relationships and the women that are often um, in these relationships have been groomed from childhood to accept this and to know this as a relationship model. They are the children whose moms have said, you know, you will be a wife, you will be, you know, num you will be amongst many wives to your husband you know hopefully and some even want to be the seventh wife or the eighth wife of this really wealthy man this is not just in Arab countries this is very true of many cultures I'm African and of course 
I grew and when I look at my history polygamy was very very natural part of how relationships were done because marriage at that time and even in polygamous relationships is a safety and protective mechanism for women it is was designed to protect women not to exploit them not to take advantage of them as some men have done but really it, it is an institution that is designed for the protection of women and children and so having a husband was really about belonging to a to to a, a place where you're protected carrying the name of that man meant that you had certain privileges and certain uh you know we we have that in biblical history you know pol you know polygamous uh cultures where you know if you belonged to this household it is also known that you know ruth was one of boaz's wives um it has been discussed and it's not something that i've researched but it would not be insane at the time so whether you are christian or jewish or whatever we all come from cultures that were very much around polygamy and you know had to do more with protection the status and provision and so a lot of women were, were not raised to necessarily expect monogamy as a relationship model and we have to accept that monogamy is a western relationship model that um you know and a relationship model that has been perpetuated by christianity for the most part with that being said i'm not going to explore uh the bible's position on polygamy because that monogamy has been promoted because like every type of relationship, there will be complexities. There are complexities and nuances to each. Of course, in polygamous relationships, the wives are to exist as sisters, but let's face it, um, competition will come in. Uh, the one with, you know, children, you know, once the children start to come, uh, you know, one wife will feel some kind of way. And we've seen that through biblical history. We've seen that in many cultures, but it's not often the case. Sometimes women can very happily coexist with their sisters um, loving the one man and raise their children in community and feel very comfortable with that setup they are women that are completely happy and comfortable in that setup in this particular case this lady who wrote to me is actually uh, Latina and she was not raised to accept this system but obviously when her husband was courting her um, she knew that he had other wives and he was very attentive very loving very affectionate and she really just felt like she could she could deal with this because the way he was courting her was clearly not the way that he was going to be in the marriage and so you know the first few years of their marriage she really felt like the world is a very 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 wealthy man there is nothing that she needs or any of his wives need the wives know each other and so you know there's no kind of deceit behind it um and basically she you know uh is new to this culture but he was very loving very present there's nothing that she needs right now or will ever need or her child will ever need that he does not provide he is consistent in coming to visit her but she is feeling that he has moved away energetically that he has withdrawn from the relationship in the way that he was present now this could be one of many things and i'm sure those of you in these cultures or who are watching this will be able to shed even greater light and i want to hear from you about this but you know in this instance the likelihood is he may be working on adding another wife to the harem uh, and not comfortable in telling her because she wasn't raised in that culture. She is navigating a, a monster right now because if you were raised to be in a monogamous relationship and now you're in a polygamous relationship, regardless of how much your man loves you, it is a bit of a mind spin. You kind of... It's a bit of a mind boggle to get your head around that. And so she was really struggling five years into the relationship and she doesn't really know what to do. And leaving her husband is not an option because she genuinely loves him. She's still beautiful to look at. She's an amazing soul, but there is struggle there because she really still wants to be special to him. Now, in this instance, we were able to have a phone conversation, a call together and really work through some really important dynamics. And really, it's com it comes down to being high value in that relationship like any relationship whether it was monogamous or or polygamous you know he has withdrawn because there's a part of him that feels wrong when he's with you there's a part of him where he cannot be 100 percent honest 
with you there's a part of him that is holding back for a reason and so whatever that is it's really about your authentic communication with him it's really about you being high value when he's with you it's really about you being warm and feminine and not punitive because he hasn't done this or hasn't done that if you're in a polygamous relationship, you have a finite time with your partner he's not going to be with you seven days a week morning till night you're probably going to see him on a sort of rotational basis and you don't want that time that you spend with him to be uh, angry or upset. And what was happening with this particular lady? She was sending upset texts and, you know, kind of really dragging on this man emotionally and, you know, sort of setting him on, you know, making the time apart very difficult so that by the time he was with her you know he was literally trying not to get into trouble and so obviously he's pulling away and it's very difficult for some of us to understand but this is a relationship model and choice that she made for herself and it's a relationship model that she's determined to stay in okay and we have no judgment about that. I certainly don't have any judgment about that. Whether you are in a monogamous relationship, polygamous relationship, if you want to stay in that relationship, then what I'm going to require of you and of her, what I said to her, is to be conscious. So the problem is we enter into it with wishful thinking and dreamy thinking, and we're just not conscious enough of what is going to be the cost every relationship has a cost you've got to be conscious jesus says to us look before you build something you know count the cost before you do it he doesn't say don't not do it don't do it even if it's the cost is really high make sure that you have enough in the kitty in the emotional kitty in the mental kitty to actually pay the price when it is due because otherwise you're going to be the person who started something and didn't finish it and become a laughing stock he says and so it's not about okay the price is too high so I'm, I'm i'm going to not pay it or i'm not going to build it you can still build a relationship you want with whoever you want but you need to be aware of the cost factor if he's a narcissist and you insist on that you want to build a relationship with a narcissist then there's a cost factor that's very very high do you have the emotional fortitude aptitude competence to cope with this level of narcissism in order to be with him because if you're going to be with him i want you to be conscious of the fact that there is a price to pay in this instance with this young lady she didn't she now has to build her emotional acumen and her, uh, her emotional intelligence and mastery to really come up to the choice that she has made. If this is your choice, then of course there will be, there is clearly, there are other women with children that require his attention. But what you can do is, is first start by accepting and being conscious that this was a conscious and, and, and deliberate decision for you to make at the time you made it because you were probably emotional because you were in love with him and you thought you could cope but you are now at this crossroad where you have only two choices to leave that marriage and create a, a model that works better for you or to stay and be okay with the setup that that you are in and accept the dynamic and educate yourself on the dynamic and be rested in that because if you don't you're going to be in your masculine energy you're going to be contentious and difficult and guess what he's going to want to do he's going to want to spend more time with the wives that make his life peaceful the wives that give him a place to rest his head the wives that are more thoughtful and considerate the wives that are prepared to communicate their needs without berating him and so it really was just important for this woman to understand how to talk to her man so that he would listen how to communicate her needs in this relationship and really kind of touch down with what her needs really were because sometimes it's easy to make the obvious problem that i'm in a polygamous relationship and i have to compete with other women but in this instance her needs were being met whilst he she for the first five years she had her needs met so what need is not being met right now it's not that the women were not there the other women were there <laughs> but something has shifted in the relationship dynamic there's now a need that is not being met and it's really important for you to dig down and figure out what is that need that used to be met maybe he would call her once a day or now he doesn't do that anymore or you know whether something is going on and then later on emerged that he was having a little bit of a tough time financially and of course if you are a man who has to run six seven households this is going to be a problem you're not going to be yourself 
So how can she be a support right now to him so that ultimately he's going to want to go where he's going to feel supported, where he's going to feel loved. The truth of the matter is we're human nature, we're humans, and we are always going to gravitate to the place where we co where we are regulated. We're always going to go to the place where we feel better. We're going to go to the place where we appreciated. If we have a choice to be anywhere, we are going to be and spend more time and invest more of our energy in the places where we're celebrated, loved, and appreciated. And at this point, she just needed to learn a little bit of emotional mastery. She had to learn how to communicate her needs to her husband, how to really even understand what the need was, and really build herself up as an individual and understand that her identity is not caught up in this marriage, that she was somebody going somewhere with, with, with passions and desires before she got into this marriage. And this man is in no way stopped Stopping her or putting barriers to what she could do for herself. She is free to be whatever she wants to be as long as she remains loyal and faithful to him and raises his children in the way that that, that you know it is you know agreeable to the both of them. You know, she had lost her identity and got caught up in competition. And it's so much easier to make it about the other women or maybe the new recruit coming in. But really, it really is to do about you focusing on your relationship with him and having almost blinkers and in the moment being present in the moment that you are with him. It's about being present with him, being clear about what your needs are and communicating them in the high value feminine way. And him communicating his needs to you in a high value feminine way. I know that this is not a video that I would normally do on this channel. And I know that some of us might be thinking, I am so triggered. And I understand that, but we have to understand that the world is not made up of our personal reality and that everybody's entitled to the relationship model that works for them with their culture and their choices. In this instance, she is not cheating with a married man. She is married to a man who is also married to other women <laughs> and you know this can be a wonderful family setup it can be a wonderful relationship setup if it is a dynamic that you have chosen if it works in your culture if it is a choice that you may even be presented with today i know that it seems so far from the reality of you know the western woman but women today all over the world are making these choices women who were raised in monogamous relationships are making the choice to be in a polygamous relationship because it suits them for whatever reason and this is really very important that you know, we are able to assist you to really be happy in that relationship as far as it is humanly possible. And so I am hoping that this video was really very helpful to you or anyone in this setup. And I pray that it's all going to just, you're going to have the courage to pick up the phone and make the call. And hopefully we can help you become happy, fulfilled, and have an incredible relationship with your husband, whichever relationship you're in, whether you're in a monogamous relationship or a, a polygamous relationship. We're here to help you um, really kind of figure out what works for you, what's right for you in that setup. In the meantime, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. In the meantime, do take care of you. Love you lots. Bye-bye now.